If you had the choice between never walking again or you can walk again, but you stank all to be damn the worst smelling person in the world, what would you do? And overwhelmingly, there were cultural differences in the responses. Yes. Yeah. I would People think of so. color were like, well, I guess I'll just be in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Overwhelming majority. There was a few people that was just like, that were specifically men that were just like, well, wait a minute, does my thing work? Because if my thing don't work, then I'll just be stanky. Yeah. My response to that is, it don't matter if your thing work, you're going to be stanky. Don't nobody want to mess yeah, with ain't you. Ain't nobody going to get with you. Yeah. No. And, and white people were just like, well, no, I'll just be smelly. I would rather, I would rather walk. And so I was like, mm -hmm. no, this is crazy. This is, this is a it's very- It's not that crazy. You got to think, especially if you were getting most of the responses from Americans, that, that tracks because Black people in this country have a history of being perceived as dirty, even though mm. I don't understand where that comes from because we're incredibly hygienic. We taught white people how to bathe. Like, well, that I, may have been, that <laughs> may have came from the fact that we just didn't have the resources to actually like bathe consistently. We're talking about the 17, 1800s. That's where that probably comes from. We were always pretty hygienic. It was about dehumanizing us. Yeah. We were always hygienic. So, you know, when you have that perception in, in order to dehumanize you, then it becomes that much more important to kind of fight against that stigma. Mm -hmm. So we always want to have our children be neat. Mm -hmm. And like that was always a real big thing with our mom that we were always clean and neat. You know, my hair was always done. Our clothes were always clean. Like we did, I mean, we were getting, you know, shoes from the grocery store. No, we weren't. No, we were no, she took us to it was no, she took us to stride right. We used to get we used I, to go to stride right. I don't even remember, I don't that, even know that that store. Yeah, that is where we used to get our shoes. But but, you know, our clothes are from Kmart, but that changed with, after elementary school, after elementary school. But, you know, but we were all, you know, mom herself shopped at the seven dollar store for her clothes. But mm -hmm. we were always clean and neat. And that yeah. was always that's that's kind of been you see a little bit of us growing away from that, because sometimes I'd be seeing these kids outside and I'd be like, where is your where is your parents? Because why? What is but, that? Is that is that? not being clean and neat or that's just taken because we've always worn wild clothes right i guess you could being neat wasn't the 44 size jeans that i was wearing no in i'm seeing kids they're not brushed and their shirts are dirty like that's I, we didn't grow up like that well distressed shirts are kind of in no style. no no their shirts are dirty like okay, i yeah. can tell that's a little bit of that was popsicle at <laughs> one point <laughs> and now it's all over your shirt what <laughs> what first of all if we got popsicles sit down and yeah get your popsicle right it's like it wasn't go run all over play get popsicle all over your shirt you know but i get i'm not a parent myself and i know parenting but i know parenting is hard so sometimes your kid got popsicle on their shirt and that's all right it's okay. We don't have to. We're not operating under that stigma anymore, y'all. Sometimes these kids let these kids be messy and dirty. I get that. Yeah, because you routinely had a Kool Aid mustache. You oh, always routinely. had a Kool Aid mustache. Routinely. I don't know why I tipped the cup up so far. <laughs> it didn't need to be tipped up so that it, the juice was coming over my top lip, but it was. Um, it was. And that's the way I drank it. And I always have a little red Kool Aid mustache. Always. Um, so, I mean, you know, you, you live how you live, but. But yeah, I definitely think, especially if you're getting responses. And then if you're not getting, if some of the responses are not from Americans, they're just different olfactory standards <laughs> <laughs> the in different countries. Like, uh, yeah. you know, we use antiperspirant and deodorant here. There are places where they do not use that. And I am in classes with a lot of international students and I, I see it and I smell it. <laughs> but for them 
just normal bodily smells are not as offensive as they are in places like the U.S., where we um, will find it highly offensive. Some, to strong, some people find to it smell highly strongly offensive. in any direction. Like I can't stand when people bathe themselves in cologne, and like now I we're trapped. To. Yes, and now we're trapped on this elevator. My eyes are watering. My nose is burning. Because you put on way too much cologne. So I used to hate it when you used to hate it when I was getting ready to go out. You'd be like, because Why you put on so much the cologne? whole bathroom and outside of the bathroom, like that whole radius, would smell so strongly of your cologne. And it was too much. If you can smell your cologne, you put too much on. If you like that clip, go ahead and hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to catch up on all of our latest content. Don't forget to hit the notification button when you do subscribe so you can get updated every time we release content. We release content every day, whether it's an actual show or clips from the shows. So go ahead and subscribe, like, comment. Also, don't forget our Patreon page where you can find our Talking Straight-ish and After Hours Uncensored episodes. That's patreon.com backslash unsolicited perspectives. But once again, thank you again for listening to Unsolicited Perspectives. I'm your host, Bruce Anthony, and I'm going to catch you next time. I'll holla.